Curiosity Shop, back with another kitchen counter thrift haul, and just look at all of that stuff. But first, before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you, a cozy corner, a table for two. That's right, today's cup of coffee is in the beautiful, creamy-looking Cremex, which was made by the Macbeth Evans Company. A division of Corning and these, uh, this coffee cup and saucer dates to the 1930s. Now you remember I bought five of these. I'm keeping one for my own collection. You know I collect individual depression cups and saucers. So I'm selling four and keeping one. The other four are not listed in the old curiosity shop yet, but they soon will be. All right, let's jump into today's thrift haul. I've got a lot of things to talk about. And sort of a varied collection here, I have to admit. There's no real rhyme or reason. But these are all utilitarian, decorative items that I purchased over the last couple of weeks or so. And most of these items here date from the 1920s into the 50s. I'm keeping a few things, and I guess I'll get those out of the way. There are also one or two items I already showed you. I'm not going to talk about those in detail because they're in an old video from a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, otherwise, everything is already available in the old Curiosity Shop. Uh, and the link to the eBay shop is listed below. So let's have a little chat about what you see on the counter. All right, so we're going to start off with the items that I've decided <clears throat> that I'm going to keep. This wonderful cake serving plate dates to the 1930s and I'm a big fan of sort of the cream a background or vellum background with anything uh, orange on it. I'm not sure why I'm attracted to it, but I just am. This may look washed out in the light and in the, 
it may appear white to you, but it's actually a, a beautiful creamy color that almost looks like custard. And turn it upside down. It's Bennett Bakeware, and again, this dates to the 30s. Is this collectible? Well, it is. There are several pieces of Bennett Ware online. Some of it sells, some of it doesn't. It's pretty modest. Uh, but wouldn't that be great with slices of pumpkin bread on it next fall? Mm-hmm. Now, you've seen me sell items like this before. And let's get this up in the light. This also has that sort of uh, creamy color to the base and also to the glaze, actually, that was used on this pottery. We'll turn it over. There's a lot written on the back. I'll let you read it. Okay, so you've seen this before. And uh, it's usually uh, Farber Brothers who do the, who do the chrome uh, on the outside, and I, I don't, so it's, it's, sometimes it's marked, but not always. There are, um, I've, I've bought and sold many pieces of this before. Uh, currently, there are about 53 pieces of Golden Maze by Sebring on the internet right now, and only three pieces have sold in the last 90 days. One of those three pieces is one that I sold. Uh, this is just a small serving bowl, and I'm going to keep it. It dates to the 30s as well. Now that piece over there, it wasn't quite a detached retina moment, but uh, I did gasp and run and lay my hands on it before my nemesis could get it. It's a piece of Old English, well that's the name of the pattern, Old English. It's depression glass and it's made by the Indiana Glass Company. Now I sometimes make fun of Indiana Glass Company, not the state. But um, I have to say, you know, Indiana Glass is sometimes known for eh. <laughs> and that's not just my opinion, but it's the opinion of a lot of collectors too. But I've got to give it up to Indiana. They did a great job on this. It's a beautiful piece from the 1930s. And again, the pattern is called, called Old English. Now I misspoke, it doesn't actually date to the 30s. And this is a good example to talk, talk about because it was produced from 1926 to 1929. When did the stock market crash? In October of 1929. So is this depression glass? Well, it is called depression glass, but there's sometimes folks mistaken, mistake, uh, mistake, make mistakes and say, depression glass is called depression glass because it was made during the depression, but actually colored glassware came on the scene in the mid twenties and, and grew in popularity through the late 20s, most of it being made in the 30s, and that's why we call it depression. Now, uh, sometimes you would call this a console bowl. Normally, if it's footed, these are often refer referred to as low fruit bowls. If there's no foot on it, <clears throat> and it just sits flat, it would normally be a console bowl, but this piece is referred to by Indiana as a footed fruit bowl. It's in perfect condition. I love it. It's not going anywhere. Won't that look fantastic with a bunch of uh, green pears sitting right in the middle of it? <clears throat> I think so. Anyway, okay, so hats off to Indiana Glass. You scored big with me on this one. I really like it. Now... <laughs> Let's get this guy out of the way. Okay. All I can say about this is... Fantastic. Well, now you know that's not all I can say. I'm going to say a whole lot more than that. Let's get it up and take a look at it in the light. And do you see the wonderful dancing 1920s girl there? Let's get up here where we can actually see it. Boy, she's having a good time out there in those weeds. Has she got clothes on? I can't, I can't tell. Usually they're naked. Eh, well, anyway. Who made it? I don't know. When was it made? Sometime between 1925 and 1935. Is it etched or embossed? No. This is all paint. 
Okay, so a lot of glass companies, uh, Lancaster, Belmont, uh, McKee, so many glass companies in the 20s and 30s sprayed this paint on. And it's, um, as you know if you've felt it before, it kind of has a waxy feel to it. But uh, it holds up pretty well, or has held up pretty well on this example. I'm having a difficult time focusing on the girl, the dancing girl. But again, she's not embossed. She's not cut to clear. It was, there would have been some kind of a, uh, not a template. Oh, what am I trying to say? Um, well, we'll say template, and then this was sprayed on. You can see that some of it has come off of the bottom. It's not coated on the inside. It's all cleared glass. Just a small little candy dish, little, little olive dish, serving dish, that kind of thing. Um, now, I may get lots of suggestions as to who made it, but I, I'll tell you folks, m several companies had this sort of dancing nude girl. It was a popular motif at that time, and there are lots of, there, I shouldn't say lots, there are four or five depression glass patterns that have very similar nude dancing women. Cameo is one, uh, ballerina is one. I haven't narrowed this down to exactly who made it. Several possibilities, I'm still working on it, but I love it and I'm not gonna sell it. Cute little teapot. Made to look like granite ware, but it's actually pottery get you out of the way and this is made in Czechoslovakia there's the stamp under there you probably can't read it you don't even it doesn't even need a stamp when you see work like this it usually is Germany Japan or Czechoslovakia uh, they loved to do black and orange in Czechoslovakia and I love it too I think it's really attractive that's going to go, go great with a cup of coffee and some ginger snaps. You can tell I'm very attracted to the orange color, and um, I'm keeping that as well. The last two things that I'm going to keep... Oh, 1930s. Uh, are these two unmarked pieces of pottery back here? This one is very Art Deco. I like the rose color. Nothing on the bottom. Tiny little chip there that I'm going to put some nail polish on. Doesn't bother me. The matte finish is very attractive. Here's another one in this very popular uh, color. There's nothing. There's no mark on the bottom of it. Uh, but I, I really like those two, so I'm keeping those. All right, that's it for what I'm keeping. Now let's go on to what's for sale. Excuse me. The items that you already have seen are the Kissing Dutch. They're online, and I talked about those in a previous video. They're not salt and pepper shakers. They just stand there. The milk pitcher is also in restaurant wear and it was made in Falls Creek, Pennsylvania by the Jackson Pottery Company. That's online, okay? This thing back here was either made in 1912 or 1976. Now, listen, I've had many people say, well, the old pottery has speckles in it or it doesn't have speckles in it and that's how you can tell and I have to tell you I have been fooled so many times because you look at a piece like this and it either has the speckles in the in the porcelain or it doesn't and you think oh that's got to be 1910 1912 and you turn it upside down and you find out that Miriam made it in 1976 for the bicentennial so you know when you're looking at this at home on your TV sets or your or your uh, computers, um, you can guess, uh, but I I don't know, and, and I'm not going to even say that I I, I think I, I think it's a contemporary piece. Uh, it's unmarked, and so it's a blank that was probably hand done by someone. And the reason why I say and when I say contemporary, I mean it could have been made in the 70s. I feel that because there's nowhere at all on the gilding. And even up here around the top, there's an absolute, it's perfect. And so for this thing to be over a hundred years old, which it could be, um, and if it is, it was very well taken care of, but there's just no wear on the bottom. Um, and it's super shiny clean inside. There's no old 
you know, caked on dirt or dust or signs of use. It's just in such, such, such beautiful condition. It either lived in a china closet and was untouched for over a hundred years, or as I said, it was made in the last 30 years or so. This kind of china painting, it can really fool you. They continue, they continue to do this today and, and it sometimes can look very old, but is not old. So again, that whole trick about looking at the porcelain and finding specks in it, um, I've just found too many, um, what am I trying to say? Too many um, uh, examples where that doesn't always hold true. As I said, because you'll, you think it's old, you turn it upside down and it says, you know, to Ronald Reagan, 1981. So, who knows? Um, is it a ferner? Ferners usually, in my experience, they have um, larger openings than this. So I don't know, but it's very, the paint is well done and there's no damage on it. So, boy, I feel like I just ran my mouth and had a huge run on sentence about that thing. Okay, this is old. Dates to the 30s, it was made in Japan. And it's all hand painted and isn't that beautiful? Let's get it up there in the light. You can see the paint strokes. There's no decal on this. I don't know if it shows up or not. You can see back here, made in Japan. And uh, this would have had uh, maybe six bowls that went with it. Small serving bowls. But anyway, that's just, I think, I like the colors. This pale yellow around the border, around the uh, diameter is very pretty. So that's the reason why I bought that. This is the, um, I'm collecting this, but I've got some extra pieces that I don't need. Uh, it's called Rust Bouquet. It's a beautiful 1930s pattern. And you can see wonderful fall fruit and vegetables that are all embossed around the edges. And um, it's Crooksville, China. You can see on the back, and the pattern is called Rust Bouquet. I don't know if any of you collect it, but uh, here are some, a few odd pieces of it that are available for you if you're interested in it. Some little um, hors d'oeuvre or cocktail forks and knives here. There are 20 pieces, so 10 knives and 10 forks. And they're brass. The wood is either teak or mahogany. It looks, um, I, I believe the wood is mahogany. It has the grain of mahogany. I'm trying to get it up here in the, we're having all kinds of focusing issues today. There we go. So it looks like mahogany to me and not uh, teak. Brass runs all the way through. Why do you want to focus? All right, we'll come over here. You want to do it there? Okay. And I can't read that, but I think it says I think it said <laughs> it doesn't want to focus. I think it says Thailand. But I'm not sure about that. Um, so anyway, there's 20 of these. 10 and 10. And here's some uh, tapestry wool. The color is referred to as eggplant. It might look a little brown to you, but it is kind of a purplish eggplant color. I'll let you see it. And um, this will sell. There are several examples of it on online. I've sold such uh, wool, yarn, and things before to collectors. So when I find it, I buy it. And this was, I think I paid a dollar for maybe the bag of all of this. I think you've seen this inkwell. I've been holding onto it for a while. It's a double glass uh, inkwell and uh, made of oak. And so that helps us date it because we know that oak was very popular from, for the oh, last 20 years of the 19th century and about the first 20 years of the 20th century. Uh, oh, about 40 or 50 years, oak was was the wood to have. And this is just a, um, a desk set. Um, back here is a planter made in Japan. 
I thought at first we were um, with a little Dutch Dutch boy here, a little Dutch character, but he's not wearing a typical Dutch costume. I get that. I guess those are supposed to be little Dutch uh, clogs. They don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably offending everyone in the Netherlands right now, and they're saying, we don't dress like that. Um, anyway, that's <laughs> Dutch for sure, or at least depicting two little Dutch people. <laughs> and But I'm not sure what's going on here. Anyway, he or she is very cute, and I like this planter. Help me out, my friends from the Netherlands. Um, is this supposed to be um, the Japanese uh, idea of what a, a person in the Netherlands would be wearing in the, in the 1930s? I don't know. Uh, so, and I do have a little Dutch blood in me. Not much, but a little bit. I have a Dutch ancestor that came to uh, Philadelphia in the 17-something-something-something. So, it's all in good fun. And I still don't know why. What it, what was it in the United States, I guess in other countries too, this big Dutch kissing thing. It was all over the place. Wallpaper, salt and pepper shakers. It was on dishes, bookends, lampshades. Um, it was a big deal. You know, and one of my subscribers said that uh, she lives near one of the big airports. I forget which city in the Netherlands, but she said there are two kissing Dutch on the elevator doors, and as the doors close, you know, the two come together and they, they kiss when the doors are shut. So who started this kissing Dutch thing? I've never done any research on it. Beautiful amber uh, juice glasses from the 30s, elegant depression. They're gilded, they're embossed, I'm sorry, etched. And I'm getting really annoyed that this camera is going in and out of focus like it is. I don't know what's wrong with it. So, because I want you to see how pretty they are, but I'm having trouble focusing. Alright. Well, we'll just leave those right there. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is um, I had to do some research on it. And I actually, it's already listed for sale, but I'm going to, if you'll pardon me, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. And I'm going to read to you from my own auction listing so that I get this right. Let me get this thing down here and we'll focus on it and then I'll, I'll tell you what it is. But first, how many of you students of history out there already, already know what do we associate lest we forget with? Well, it's not the Alamo, <clears throat> not the Titanic. The phrase, lest we forget, is, is normally associated with the First World War. Now, this tiny little thing, I found this um, about a month ago in an antique store in West Philadelphia, and I was drawn to it because I immediately recognized it as an early piece of pottery. Uh, and you can barely see the mark on it. In fact, I don't, I don't even think I could read it when I was in the store, because <clears throat> it was a dark store. But I did recognize it as an old piece, and I really liked the glaze, the colors, and it had sort of an arts and crafts feel to it, with a little English cottage in the countryside. It looked like a piece of pottery from the first part of the 20th century, and it is. So uh, what is it? Well, it's an arts and crafts style um, piece of pottery. Now, the only thing it says on the bottom is Dorset and then some numbers. So Dorset, once I got home, I was able to do some research and, find, and I found out, so I'll read to you. In 1905, a Charles Collard, C-O-L-L-A-R-D, bought two houses, 21 and 23 Green Road, Pool, Dorset, converting them into a pottery. Collard had been um, an apprentice with some other English, I'm paraphrasing now, other English potteries. And uh, on the south coast of England, there was a good supply of red clay. Aha! See the red clay? And so he made lots of souvenir wear and so forth. And um, by 1915, the First World War was, of course, raging in Europe. We hadn't gotten involved yet here in the United States. But when the war was over, um, Charles Collard designed this piece as a, mem as a uh, memento souvenir piece 
We know that the poppy is the flower associated also with the First World War. So you could put poppies in this. The vase is open in the top and then it's its its, its own frog. So other little buds could stick out. And you could put poppies or anything in it you want. So um, probably made right after the war, maybe even made into the 1920s as a souvenir piece for people to, to buy. Maybe you, you lost someone in the war or just simply wanted a, a commemorative piece of pottery to put some flowers in. That's what this is, made in England to commemorate the First World War. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, I've got it listed for sale. We'll see what happens to it. Um, uh, if it doesn't sell, I'd be happy to keep that piece because it's uh, charming and it's a nice memento, uh, if we could call it nice uh, memento or touching memento, I guess I could say, um, of the First World War. Okay, so standing back up and getting back here. Um, again, I already told you what it is I plan on keeping. The rest of the stuff is for sale in the old curiosity shop. The link is listed below. I've got more to show you, so I've got to get busy and get listing and get another thrift haul up. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope your new year has been off to a great start. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, saying thanks for watching and so long for now. This is